I think they are needed in some way because not everybody has a computer, not everybody has a TV, and, and newspapers are really convenient for everybody to understand what's going on in the world. If newspapers were to go to the wayside and, and no longer print, you wouldn't, wouldn't really be affected, right? No, um, unless I needed to wash my windows. <laughs> if there were no more newspapers, what would you do? I'd probably just keep on living my life the way I was living it before. <laughs> It's ink on paper. It's informational and entertaining. And according to its own slogan, it's life printed daily. And the Tampa Tribune has been since 1895. Informing the public for more than 100 years, the paper serves the 53rd largest city in the nation, Tampa. Hi, I'm Amy Mariani, and welcome to Spectrum. In this edition, we'll be taking a look at the old daily, its glorious past, its ever-changing present, and what the future might hold. So join us for the new age of newspapers, a look at the Tampa Tribune. The Tampa Tribune isn't the same paper it was 100 years ago. Spectrum reporter Corrales Aguilar shows us what the paper has to offer today. It is no secret that the way people get their news has changed and continues to change. The news industry, in particular the traditional newspaper, has felt these changes the most. So what's prompting people to access different mediums to receive information? Denise Palmer is president and publisher of the Tampa Tribune. She chalks it up to the transformation of various lifestyles. Now you can get information in a whole variety of ways, as you well know, you know, mobile phones, blogging, community papers, TV, radio. The recent recession left no prisoners, so how has the economy affected the Tampa Tribune? Rick Edmonds is a media business analyst for the Pointer Institute in St. Petersburg. He conducted an in-depth study on the state of newspapers in the United States. On average, they lost around 43, 45 percent of their advertising just in the space of three years. To cope with falls in revenue, the Tampa Tribune laid off about 120 people from 2007 to 2009. That's according to the Tampa Tribune and the St. Petersburg Times. The paper closed bureaus and initiated forced furloughs in 2009. Though the Times has not announced layoffs, Creative Local reports the paper shrank in staff by about 60 people from 2006 to 2008. In addition to freezes in pay, early retirement incentives, and a 5% pay cut across the board. The Tampa Tribune is owned by publicly traded Media General, while the Times is owned by the private nonprofit Pointer Institute. This ownership could be why the Tampa Tribune has had more layoffs. The paper bears the brunt of a nationally owned company with stockholders, while the Times does not. A year or so ago, we were doing layoffs, as every newspaper in the country was doing them, um, because the advertising revenue had declined. Um, due to the economic um, troubles the, the nation was in. Edmonds is concerned that smaller newspaper staffs won't be able to produce a product their customers expect. Papers will become uh, so small, especially the days of the week that don't have too much advertising, that they won't really satisfy the, uh, the, the loyal newspaper reader. However, Palmer remains confident. She says the paper still holds a significant readership. According to the Audit Bureau of Circulations, 160,000 people still pay for the paper daily. That's enough to fill the Raymond James Stadium two and a half times. The amount of people who actually read the paper daily is roughly three times that number. That's enough to fill the same stadium seven and a half times. Like every newspaper in America, that's less than it would have been 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Um, but it's still, you know, a lot of penetration. We reach a lot of people in the market when you think about reaching, you know, 550,000 people every day. The Daily not only made changes to the look of its newspaper, but they've also made changes to its pricing structure. The Monday through Saturday edition's price increased to 75 cents and a dollar for the Sunday edition. Edmund says for dailies to maintain customer demand, they must tighten their focus. And that's exactly what Palmer says the Tribune is trying to do. So that's our philosophy is to be really locally relevant. Uh, be useful, uh, to try to do unique types of, of news and information and entertainment that people can't get from other sources. Palmer describes the many changes of the Tampa Tribune as a good thing and says the paper lived through some tough times, but now they're ready to get back to what they do best, cover the news. Reporting for Spectrum, I'm Corrales Aguilar. Do you read the Tampa Tribune at all? No, and I get it on Sundays. <laughs> The Tampa Tribune is not only one of the largest newspapers in the state, but one of the oldest. It began daily publication in the late 1800s and since then has evolved into a recognizable brand with deep ties in television and the internet. 
Spectrum reporter CJ Vila shows us how a dedication to local news has carried the Tribune from its early beginnings to its recent strides in multimedia journalism. The Tampa Tribune now comes directly to your email and even your cell phone. With today's technology, people can get the latest breaking news in a matter of seconds. No longer do they have to wait for the next morning to see what happened yesterday. But it hasn't always been like this. For more than a century, the paper's namesake city has changed, and so has the paper itself. From pencils to pixels, from typewriters to computers, and from late editions to text alerts, technology continues to change newspapers. Years ago, the Tampa Tribune could only print in a limited amount of colors and fonts. Now, the front page paper almost always features full color photos. Kurt Loft is a former reporter for the newspaper and says the paper did a good job on reflecting the times and what was going on in the city. Yeah, I mean, I think the Times and the Tribune had two different missions, but I think for Tampa, Tampa was the paper that everybody wanted to read because it was about Tampa and the man on the street. And, uh, and it, it covered Tampa in a, in a grittier way. It was more of the hometown paper, of course. Another former Tribune reporter, John Dunn, remembers when he worked for the paper in the 80s and when the paper was just at the beginning of the computer age. When I first started, we had these bulky computers that when I was in a bureau that you could type on, you had to have the phone plugged in to the, the receiver thing, and once you sent a story, you couldn't get it back. Dunn says during his six years at the Tribune, the paper practiced more shoe leather journalism. We had to be out of the office. We had to be out there talking to people and being out on the street talking to sources. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I kind of, I kind of, it would have been nice, you know, kind of have the internet available to do some of the stories I had to do that took weeks to do. During the next 20 years, the Tampa Tribune would morph from caveman computers to the front runner of multimedia journalism. With its parent company, Media General, they played a part in creating a concrete example of multimedia convergence. They joined forces with TBO.com and News Channel 8 to form the News Center in 2000, the first of its kind in the nation. And for former executive editor of the Tribune, Gil Phelan, it was the Tribune's biggest selling point. Uh, Media General had a good handle on uh, where the technology would be uh, taking customers and what and what was going to be needed to serve customers' news and information needs on multiple platforms. Loft remembers how it felt joining the Tribune for the first time. Well, when I first came to the Tribune, it was a vibrant place because I was a young cub reporter, uh, and so the whole thing was was just was just uh, Disney World for me. I mean, I was starry-eyed and. I got the beat that I wanted to do from the beginning, never had to work in a bureau, which most people do as a reporter. So in my first few years there, it was um, sort of a, of a lighter than air experience. But as I grew into the role after seven or eight years, it really became, for me, a, a dramatic and dynamic place to work. But with convergence comes change. And in some instances, change meant downsizing. Back in the 80s, in the early 90s, I think we were fully staffed. I mean, we had people covering m all the major beats. And by the time Loft left in 2008, the cut was more than apparent. Well, from what I'm told now, the newsroom is pretty much a skeleton, a shadow of what it once was. Almost a 30-year veteran, Loft recalls the connection he shared with his readers and the expectations to which he was held. That was my greatest experience at the Tribune, was to come through for my readership and deliver the goods that they wanted and to gain that trust between my readers. That, that was something that I'll, I'll always have with me as a, as a human being and as a reporter. When Thielen joined the Tribune in 1998, he saw the potential and where the paper needed to go. So it was looking for a strong vision and strong, and strong leadership and um, that's what my team and I uh, uh, attempted to put in place. Thielen says the Tribune has always and will always have the same goal, being the essential enterprise and news source for Tampa, creating a newspaper to reflect the fullness of life in Tampa. So, what we want to do is create a newsroom where um, uh, journalists want to come to work to uh, produce uh, uh, journalism that our readers can't wait to read. Loft makes it clear that the paper provided a service to its citizens. But our mission really was to, to be the newspaper that was on the street. We were the guys that were in the trenches covering Tampa night and day, 
from the street level, from the, from the blue collar level. And to all three that worked there, they each took away something great from the Tribune, one that would have them all feel as if they were at the Tribune during its golden years. Whether it be a kid's dream come true. When I first came there in 1981, it was exciting because I was very starry-eyed. Uh, it was fresh for me. Having a job as a reporter at that age uh, was just incredibly exciting. The flexibility to report. Uh, we were given a lot of latitude. The Tribune had a reputation back then as being a reporter's paper, and they put a lot of stock in what in the work that the reporters did. Or being a part of something memorable. Well, so it was a good time, if not the golden time, at least the silver time. Reporting for Spectrum, I'm C.J. Vila. And the Tampa Tribune, I like that paper because it's shorted now since they tried to trim the paper. And when I fold the Tampa Tribune, it folds. Things were looking good for the Tampa Tribune at the end of 2006. But then in late 2007, the recession hit everywhere. The housing market crashed and Wall Street and the auto industry both needed federal bailouts as more and more people lost their jobs. Newspapers around the country began to close or strictly go online such as the Rocky Mountain News or the Seattle Post Intelligencer. Spectrum reporter Cynthia Jaramillo explains to us what the Tribune has done to stay ahead of the pack or to simply stay afloat. Over the last 30 years, the Tampa Tribune faced many changes. At one point, the newspaper worked separately from their TV counterpart. The Tribune developed its own writing style and reporting techniques. Even the tools used to gather information differed from other mediums. In 2000, everything changed with the construction of the news center, converging the Tampa Tribune, Channel 8, and TBO.com under the same roof. In the years to come, most staff personnel transform themselves into multimedia journalists able to work on all three platforms. Michelle Bearden was the first print reporter to try out her hand at television reporting. I was only here just for about a month or two when the news director, Channel 8, came up to me and he said, Michelle, why aren't we covering religion? She then became the religion reporter for Channel 8, doing a weekly report on faith and values. She tried to keep it a secret, knowing many of her co-workers would disapprove. We were kind of print elitist. We didn't um, think too highly of television. And, but then about Two months later, after I started, they started putting my picture on the um, newspaper boxes, say, watch Michelle Bearden on Channel 8, Keeping the Faith, so my ruse was uncovered. Switching to television brought new changes for Michelle. Her concerns were not only if she could tell an in-depth story in just two or three minutes. I made a lot of goof-ups in the beginning because it was um, a complete work in progress for me. There, there wasn't anybody to go to back then. Fast forward to 2006 when many co-workers asked her to help them so they wouldn't lose their jobs. And all those people I told you about who were still here, who kind of made fun of me in 1994, 95, 96, 97, when I was doing television were all now coming up to me and saying, can you teach me how to do that? After the convergence, writers and reporters were now expected to keep the internet up to date with their stories. Before a story could air on television or get a full story printed in the newspaper, the internet is where consumers would go to get their breaking news. So news gathering, um, we have to do more of it because we are requested to do more stories now because the internet is like this angry machine we have to feed all day long. You know, what have you done for me lately? William March is the senior political writer for the Tampa Tribune and TBO.com. He started at the Tribune in 1984 and became its political reporter in 1994. He recalls how labor intensive it was to gather information. At one time, if I wanted to know a figure for how much a particular person had contributed to a politician, I had to make phone calls and wait for somebody to mail me a figure that I can now find out in five or ten seconds by clicking on the internet. So it's drastically amplified my ability to throw key facts and figures into my stories. Like other newspapers across the country, the Tampa Tribune experienced the drop in circulation over the past six months. According to the Audit Bureau of Circulation, the Tampa Tribune's 
fell by 18.2% on weekdays and 8.7% on Sundays, making the relationship between TBO.com and News Channel 8 that much more important. The downturn in the economy and loss of advertisement revenue caused the newspaper to make changes. The look of the Tampa Tribune took on a new face. It changed its format, featuring fewer sections and less news. They were making a statement that they were here to stay. I don't think that the demand for that is going to disappear. It might have been cut down some by the ability to find anything you want instantaneously on the internet, but I don't think it's going to disappear. If it did, I would feel that we had a radically less well-informed nation. For centuries, people have depended on the newspaper to supply them with investigative pieces, heartwarming stories, and information that can teach them about important issues. People who want something a print product delivers that the internet can't deliver, and that is a selection of information that's been compiled by a professional who knows what matters and knows what's important and is giving you things that you didn't know you wanted that you wouldn't have expected to go look for. And March says the interest for news itself is on the rise. The demand by readers for our content, for the news that we produce, if you consider both print and online, is increasing as fast as it ever has. As a matter of fact, the editor and publisher magazine a few weeks ago released a list of the top 10 fastest growing papers in the country measured in both print and online readership together. We were in that top 10. Reporting for Spectrum, I'm Cynthia Jaramillo. So, do you think newspapers should stay around or do you think they can kind of go by the wayside? I don't think we're ready to give them away, but I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. I mean, the internet is the big source of information now, is it not? I mean, what can you not find on the internet? The future of newspapers may be uncertain, but we do know one thing. The people will always want to be informed. But how will they get this information? Will ink stained fingers become a thing of the past? Or will there still be a paper source of news in a smaller, less frequent form? Spectrum reporter Conchetta DeLuco explores how people may get their news in the near future and what this future could mean for the Tampa Tribune. Listen. Sound familiar? How about now? For more than a hundred years, millions of Americans hear this sound every day. These are the sounds of Tampa's oldest news source. These are the sounds dedicated reader Brenda Swanson can't wait to hear. And I generally start reading it before I've even gotten back in the house. These are the sounds of the Tampa Tribune. The voice of the people of Tampa Bay. I think every community needs a newspaper. We all need a hometown newspaper. But what if one day that voice is silenced? I might have to move to where there's so I can still get a newspaper. Multimedia graphics editor David Williams says it is the question on everyone's mind. That's going through the mind of everybody that works in a newsroom across the country. With the rise of the internet came the attraction to right here, right now. As an editor of TBO.com, Clarissa Gerlach knows this desire firsthand. People crave that, that immediacy that really can be served, obviously, more through the web. What most people do not crave, Gerlach says, is the same old newspaper. You know, it used to just be you had your, your hometown paper, or now you can find news from bloggers out in the community. But that doesn't mean every blogger is a journalist. Former executive editor for the Tribune, Gil Thielen, says there can be a big difference between the two. The extraordinary explosion of uh, literally millions of blogs is, is an amazing occurrence. Some of the practitioners of blogging, it is really first-rate journalism. Then there are other blogs which are less professional in their intent and in their performance, more casual and, and informal, so it is, it is difficult to put a single definition on this extraordinary profusion 
of words, images, ideas that, uh, that, that constitute blogs. Former Tribune reporter Kurt Loft says that blogging shouldn't be taken seriously at all. Blogs are unfiltered. You don't have the editing filter process that you do with a good newspaper. If you want to read a blog, you're reading basically someone's uncensored, unfiltered, uncorrected uh, thoughts and opinions. Gone are the days when newspapers were the sole source of information. I think really the days of, you know, just like I said, having that one news provider, it's just not going to be like that anymore. There's a lot more ways to publish news. We, we have to keep up with that as a news organization. If online provides the news and much more, then the question remains, where does the paper fit in? According to Gerlach, it could offer something more than an in-depth news break online. Coming back with that, the media analysis of what does it all mean, you know, maybe that's where newspapers um, can still take us because obviously, you know, we still have to explain to people, you know, break it down for people. But will the Tribune still be what we know today? Will we still have daily issues? Some don't believe so. Maybe it only publishes three times a week. Or maybe once a week. I really do see it where it's going to get to the point where it's going to be, you're going to get a, basically an encyclopedia-sized newspaper on Sundays that covers an entire week's worth of news. Amber Rojas is a student at the University of South Florida. When she needs her news fix, it only takes her a few clicks and keystrokes to get what she needs. I feel it's like the easiest way to make sure you are informed about what's going on in your community and in the rest of the world. Whereas like if you go to get the newspaper, you have to go buy one and then it's very limited in what you can get. Finding news online also allows people to connect with one another, to find stories and share them with friends. I think it's especially for people my age and younger, you kind of need that interactivity to get people to actually care about what's going on and actually want to read about what's going on. Interactivity, social networking, accessibility, TBO.com is the Tribune's online counterpart, providing readers with all of these things. So what's next for the old daily? Although the internet is in the spotlight, William says it won't completely upstage what's in black and white. I personally feel that the print medium will be around for a while. Uh, I just think there's a base of our circulation that, you know, are diehards. For Swanson, it's an important part of her daily routine. I sit and read the paper while I'm having breakfast and do the puzzles and I probably spend an hour every weekday reading the paper and on the weekends longer because there's more paper and that's every day. For now, it seems the Tampa Tribune as we know and love it is safe. But the future of the paper five to ten years from now is another story. Listen again. <laughs> Sound familiar? How about now? Many say the future of the newspaper lies in the internet and mobile devices. But even that hasn't turned out to be a reliable revenue maker. Business Insider shows digital ad spending is on the decline for newspapers. So what can they do? Gerlach says charging for content isn't an option. If you're going to have paid content, it has to be so exclusive. It has to be a content that you're getting, that you're not get, you cannot get anywhere else. Since so much news can be found online for free, Williams says sites need another option for making money. They're finding it, uh, you know, online for free. So that I think has hurt our subscriber base. The uh, you know fine line that we walk is you know how do we make that profitable for ourselves? The answer might be mobile technology. Now everybody's talking mobile, mobile, mobile. iPads, cell phones, even augmented reality. The list goes on and on. And Clarissa says, so do the advertisement opportunities. I don't know if we've really figured out the online part, but maybe we really need to start thinking about the mobile part. You know, if we, if we thought, gosh, we just can't make up the ad revenue online, can we do it with mobile? You know, so we might need to be thinking more 
into what the next phase of journalism, um, you know, how people are accessing journalism through their mobile devices and the opportunities there for making money. Mobile devices may be the next stop, but they're not perfect. You can only get so much on your phone and I don't see it becoming the be-all, end-all for news and print. But the disappearance of newspapers could be an upcoming reality. Right now, with so much of the emphasis on electronic medium and medias and, and, and whatnot, I think that the future of the Tribune is really going to be a battle between the medium and the message. Uh, is the message, the news, more important than the medium that you read the news on? And right now, everyone is so caught up with the, with the medium, they're sort of forgetting that the message is what a newspaper is all about. And no one really knows about the future of the Tampa Tribune. A lot of questions, few answers, a lot of uncertainty. But we do know one thing. It is going to take a lot to completely silence the voice of the Tampa Tribune. Listen one last time. The times that my paper hasn't shown up, and there's the occasional days that it, the, you know, I'm, I, the delivery is just not here. Um, it's, first I'm angry, like how dare they not deliver my paper? And then I think, well, what am I supposed to do now? How do I start my day without knowing what the weather's gonna be and, and what happened last night? And, and it's just, it's very, very upsetting to me when I don't have the newspaper in the morning. Reporting for Spectrum, I'm Conchetta DeLuco. Okay, so you get your news through television mostly? Mostly, yes. I do read the Tampa Tribune every once in a while, but I don't get a lot of time. I don't order a subscription to the paper, and if I can make a phone call and then have my app right there at the same time, it basically makes waiting in line and waiting for anything like a doable thing. I absolutely think there's a value in newspapers, yeah, uh, that you don't get with the, with the internet. What value? Uh, there's something about just picking up the newspaper on a Sunday morning, be able to sit with a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, thumb through it, and it's just relaxing. It's impossible to say whether the Tampa Tribune will be around in the next 10 years, or if newspapers will be around in the next decade. But as long as there is a need, the Tribune will continue to deliver a product, whether it's the newspaper on someone's doorstep, a breaking news email alert, or the lead story on the 6 o'clock news. That's Light, printed daily. For Spectrum, I'm Amy Mariani. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to masscom.wusf.usf.edu and click on Spectrum Project.